Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to your Brush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to be going over the Cricut Design Space. I've gotten a lot of questions on the Design Space since I put out the video on how to cut your own stencils or templates with a Cricut. So in a little while, I'm going to be putting a link up above to that particular video, and that will actually take you through the cutting process. But today, we're going to be concentrating on the Cricut Design Space, what it does, and all of the tools that can get you through your project for what you're gonna need to create your own stencils. So with that, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications. A thumbs up would be great. A couple of comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, let's roll up our sleeves and get right into it. So upon entering the design space, you'll see a few things. Home, gives you your welcome because I'm already logged in. You got my projects, explore, okay, and new projects. So basically what the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down here. Now you don't have, if you don't have any projects started like I do here, I can just click new project and start from there. But if you don't have any new projects started and it's your first time in, you're going to want to click new project. Once you click new project, it's going to bring you into this thing that looks like a graph paper. And the next thing you want to do is upload an image. So one of the most important things right here you can see with your images is it's telling you the compatible files, JPEG, GIF, PNG, BMP, SVG, or DXF. There's really only two of them here that I ever go to. It's a JPEG or a PNG. I tend to lean toward the PNG. I don't know why. It's just more convenient sometimes, but the JPEG works just as well. So I already have some, all of my artwork down here. You can see ones that are already loaded. But if I wanted to upload an image, I would just go here. Now you can browse or you could just drop the file here. So if I was to browse, so I'm gonna select an image. I'll pick the sunflower, we'll keep it simple. And there it is. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to pick whether simple, moderate, complex, or moderately complex or complex. So you can read through these here. I usually just pick moderately complex, kind of in the middle of the road. Simple details and colors with good contrast between subject and background. This complex, even when I'm doing really complex shapes, I don't tend to typically pick this. I mean, you could play around with these, but for the most part, this one works for just about everything. So let's pick that. And we're going to hit continue. Okay, so now, background remover. Removes background to create ready-to-cut images automatically or manually. What happened was a little while ago, Cricut tried to go to a subscription-based service to be able to use Design Space. And quite frankly, the users of the Cricut who have you know, a lot of dollars invested in it lost their minds. And from my understanding, they backed off of it, apologized, and kept the design space free. But they did also keep a paid version uh, and it gave, gives you a few other features. I particularly don't need those features and I don't think you will either if you're going to be using this to cut out stencils or templates like I do. So we're just going to come down here to where it's manual and you got erase and you got select. Okay, so the erase tool allows you there's an eraser size right here. It allows you to erase certain parts if you needed to erase certain parts. It allows you different sizes to be able to erase. But with a simple object like this, I'm going to come over here to the select tool. I'm going to pick that and it's going to erase everything. Now, this is important because if you don't erase the background, it's going to want to cut this square. So if you do want to cut a square out of your template material, then you would have to kind of do this in reverse. There is also, what's really cool, an undo button. Okay, so if you wanted the Cricut to actually cut a square here, you can actually take and you can delete out this part of your template. Okay, and by doing so, it will still cut all of these lines, but it'll also cut the square. So if you had a 12 by 12 piece of mylar in here, 
it would actually cut out the square along with cutting out the petals. I don't particularly usually do that. So I'm going to do an undo to get back. Okay. I'll take the select tool and I'll select the background so I don't get that square cut because I'll be showing you in a minute how you can take this and you can duplicate it and make it different sizes once you get to your cut area. So once you're happy the way your design is going to be cut out and the way it's going to look, you're just going to come over here and you're going to hit apply and continue. All right, now there's two options here. One, I don't usually ever use the print then cut image, whereas I do use the cut image. Okay, I don't find the need to have to print it. Now, if you do find that need, um, you'll have to, you know, install the pen, print it, and then cut it. So in my case, I usually just do the cutting. Now, I did want to show you these little black spots here. And one of the reasons why that occurred is because I was using just the erase tool, not the erase background. But I did that on purpose because I want to show you once you get to this area, because especially if you you know, scan an image in from your computer and you bring it in and you got to erase the background, sometimes it leaves some remnants behind. So in this case, you're going to want to hit back and go get rid of those because your cutter is going to cut little slots or holes wherever you see the little black marks. So I'm going to go to back and they're very difficult to see here. So I'm going to come back down to erase. I'm going to set my erase tool for a pretty decent size. Okay, maybe even a little bigger. And I'm going to try to see where those black marks were and get them out of there. Now you don't want to hit your petals. You want to be careful here. And if you do, you just hit an undo. They are difficult to see. They're very light brown. But you could always go check your work by hitting the apply and continue. And I have one here and one here yet. Go back to my erase tool. I'm holding down on the mouse, uh, on the left mouse button while I am dragging. And if I think I got it, let's go take a look. And it looks pretty good. Looks like we got it all. All right, so once you have that, you're going to hit cut image. Now, before I go forward, you can give this a name. I give it a Sunflower 4. Okay, so you can give it a name here. You can give it a tag. It's optional. I don't usually give tags, but I will give it a name. So when it saves it to my library, you know, it, it'll, it'll appear under that name. So hit Cut Image, and you'll see the green highlight around it, showing that you selected that, and you're going to hit Upload. All right. So once you upload it, as you can see, I just uploaded it a second time. I already had it uploaded, but I wanted to take you through the process. All right, so there's three little dots appear here. So if you wanted to delete this, you can just pick that. You can hit delete and get rid of it. If you don't want to delete it, just hit the X and go back. So now that we have it selected, you're going to want to come down here and go add to canvas. And there it is. Now, the mat that I use is a 12 by 12 mat. So this gives you a ruler up top here and it gives you a ruler on the side. So I'm going to take you through all of the tools up top here, but one of the first things I want to show you is what this thing does is you can get rid of it and you know bring something else in, or you can resize this manually by doing it this way, just by grabbing this grip, or you can rotate it. Okay, and if you don't like that, again, the best thing about all of this and any program like this is the undo button. So it brings it right back to where it was. So you can't be really afraid of making a mistake. The, the dimensions appear here. This is 4.533, 4.55. So let's just say I wanted to make this four inches across the top, okay? They give you a width and they give you a height. Let's start here. We'll start in the middle, but I will show you all the rest of the tools. Okay, so there's a width and there's a height. So if I wanted my width to be four inches, I just easily type in 4.0 and I hit the enter button. It automatically sizes it to four inches by four inches. As you see, it's 4.2, close enough. All right, so let's go through some of the features. Once you got it sized correctly with the width and the height, we'll go over here and go th run through the features. So as you already saw, we have an undo button, which is a great button to have. 
The operations button, you're going to need it on basic cut. Unless you're going to do the print then cut feature, uh, you're really not going to need to pull this menu down. You just want to make sure you're on basic cut. Um, there is a pen feature in here if you're going to be you know, drawing something with a pen, but again, that's not going to give you the result of cutting a template, so not needed. The foil and the score, definitely not needed for what we want to be doing with this Cricut. So you're going to want to be on basic cut. The other thing is it allows you to give it different colors. Okay, Not a feature I usually take advantage of, but it's here if you want it. Okay, Easily change colors. As you can see, also, if I'm not selected, none of this is highlighted. If I select my object, all my tools then become highlighted. The other thing is advanced. This is just for advanced colors. Here's a color number down here. In case you know the you know, color number that you want, you can put it in there. Again, I'm looking to cut templates, so I don't have to be all that precise. So let's make sure we're clicked on it. So you also have a deselect tool. If you have something, you know, many objects selected, you can deselect with this particular tool. As you can see right there, it just deselected it because it was the only thing we had highlighted. Um, there's an edit tool, the cut and a copy. So it's just like, you know, any other Windows basically program, you can cut or copy. So if I hit copy, all right, come over here, I right click on my mouse and I hit paste. So now they're right on top of each other, I bring it over here. So now again, I can grab this grip and I can resize it. So now I could have two different, you know, size templates on my, you know, one sheet of Mylar. So let's click on that so we can continue. Offset. Um, again, this is kind of a cool feature. So if I want to put a border around this, you can give it the thickness of the border you want right here, okay? Whether it's rounded or square, and hit apply. Now what that did is that put a border around. So let's look at the outer border and let's change the color. Okay, so now you can see the contrast, but you can get your Cricut now to cut out that border. That's a little tight. Let's undo that one. So now watch this. You can, you can select that. Let's select the outer border and I'm just going to go to delete on my keyboard and I delete it off. We'll go here, offset. This might look a little better on this one and let's apply it. Again, let's click the outer. See that now that picked the inner border, and you can see the outer border is a little bigger. Let's just select a different color for it, and there you go. So now, just as easy as that, it's not only going to cut all your petals, but it's also going to cut out um, an offset border around it. So let's just select one again so we can keep on with our tools. You got an arrange, you can send the back, send the front. And what that means by that is if I select, say, the black or the inner part, right? I can, if I send that to back, it disappears. Keep in mind, it's still there. But this is for like a layering type of tool, okay? So I'm still selected, move forward, and here it comes back. There's a flip feature. You're really not going to see the difference on this. Is flipping vertical or horizontal. Horizontal flip and a vertical flip. Um, you're really not going to notice the difference with an object like this, but if you did want to mirror an image, that would be the way to do it. We already went over the, the width and the height, and then of course you have a rotate, and you could rotate this by anything, I don't want to say 45, and you can see it rotated it. And then you can go back to zero. So you can rotate, and then your position on your board if I move that, the position, your X and Y, X is horizontal, Y is vertical. Okay, so it's as simple as that. You can take, and again, you can you know right click, you can hit copy right clicking, or you can hit edit and copy there. And then you can make as many of these as you want, and you can size them however you like. So you get have all different sizes on your cutout. And again, Depending on the size of your mylar, I usually buy 12 by 12. So I can fill this all up with different size sunflowers all the way up to the 12 inch uh, mark in either direction. And I can just keep hitting paste and resizing. Once I have a copy, I don't have to keep recopying. I could just keep hitting paste.
and fill my page. I don't like one, delete it. I have some room here, I want to make a bigger one. I want to make it exactly six and a half instead of that. Come back up to my size, 6.5, hit enter, good to go. So it's as simple and as easy as that. There's one more feature I want to show you and it's right down here in the lower left and you can barely see it until you hover over it. And that will shrink down your design space so you can see your full design space where my 12 inches is here, my 12 inches is there. I have everything within side my cut space or the cut space I want. So you can just zoom in and out to wherever you're comfortable with it. Once you're at this point, you're going to hit make it and that's going to take you into the part where it's going to walk you through the steps on how to cut it. I'll pop a link up above to that video. Go check that one out. That'll take you from here and show you how to go through the cutting process. Well, all right, there you have it. The design space for Cricut. It's really not that complicated, but the really cool part about the design space, it allows you to upload an image and size it to whatever size that fits your project. It's a really cool tool to have in your shop, you know, when you're airbrushing. So with that, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. You know the drill, the thumbs up, the comments, the questions links down below. It all really helps. We're growing. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. With that, we'll see you in the next video.